Hey, Brian Steger here again, certified personal trainer and baby boomer fitness expert where today I'm gonna talk about female fat loss over 40 and we're talking about different dieting tactics. And I figured I brought in two awesome experts on over 40 dieting tactics, Perry and Kelly, and they're gonna share with you some of the, the best dieting tactics that they've used over the last three to five years of their training where they've really taken it up a notch uh, that's benefited them and helped you cut down on the amount of time that it takes for you to get results. So um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having you us. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, so I kind of want to talk about starting off with is whenever I meet with somebody for the first time, they talk about, they show me their meal plan and I'm like, uh, did you just get back? To, no, no pun intended to Ethiopia, but I'm like, did you just get back from Ethiopia because you're not eating anything? Right. And actually their weight increases. So um, you guys both have experienced this where we talked about we need to eat more. Mm -hmm. What have you noticed about these starvation diets? Well, first of all, they don't work. I think a lot of people feel that by eating less calories, you will lose weight or maintain your weight. But what people don't realize is that if you don't feed your body, your body does kind of go in a starvation mode and like holds onto fat. Um, so you don't actually lose fat. And so it's kind of a weird uh, paradigm shift, you know, to try to convince people to actually eat, eat food actually will help you lose fat. Um, so yeah, try to eat more than a thousand calories. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you've experienced this yourself. Absolutely. These starvation diets. What's your experience? Um, I had horrible experience. Okay. Um, uh, wasn't dropping any weight. Um, in fact, I was um, gaining weight mm -hmm. because my body was um, creating fat because I wasn't feeding it enough, and I also wasn't eating whole foods. I was doing a lot of uh, supplementation with protein shakes and protein bars. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't feeding my body and giving it the nourishment that it needed. Awesome. Uh, so what nutrients have you found that have benefited you the best to get out of these starvation diets and tactics that you've used to get you out of starvation? Honestly, um, when I hired my trainer, um, he introduced me to the world of food. I, I love food, but I was scared of food. Right. And it was um, eating every um, three hours. Mm -hmm. Um, it was having whole foods, getting, getting away from the protein shakes and protein bars, and focusing in more on lean proteins, uh, complex carbs like sweet potatoes and brown rice, and introducing some vegetables and uh, minimal fruits because they have a little bit more sugar than what I need, mm -hmm. but uh, focusing in on that. And some healthy fats too. Healthy yes. fats. Healthy mm -hmm. fats. So you guys found eating, you found eating whole foods have been a big benefit. Huge. Huge. Yes. Um, okay. So uh, I think protein and fiber are mm -hmm. two awesome. Like you hit on vegetables, like that protein is going to allow you to uh, make you feel full. Right. Uh, and it's going to give you most bang for your bucks for your calories. And then that fiber is going to help you feel full too. And usually if you're taking in fiber, you're taking in vegetables. So the vegetables are giving you micronutrients. Um, so those two I found that have really helped with those starvation diets. It lets you get to those 1,200 to 1,500 calories but feel full and satiated. Yes. Where on these starvation diets, you go on them for three days and what is happening? You walk past the refrigerator and you want to eat everything that's in there. Right. So, and, and the results don't last from those diets either. I mean, you might, you might drop water weight. Um, it might drop a little bit of body fat, but as soon as you go back to normal activity, it's all going to come back and possibly even more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Talk about um, your routines. I, when I met you, Kelly, you were an avid runner. Perry, you did a lot of group X. So how did you guys transform your bodies to these lean, tone, fit, athletic physiques over 40? Um, well, as far as exercise, I mixed it up a little bit. Instead of constantly doing cardio classes at the gym, um, I started taking up a little bit more weightlifting, lifting a little bit heavier, um, varying you know weights from either you know high volume or taking days and lifting a little bit heavier. Um, as far as food, kind of what Kelly mentioned, eating every three to four hours, um, just fueling my body, and so kind of fueling the muscle to grow, and then the fat goes away. So. How about yourself? Uh, I would agree. Um, meal planning saved my life. Meal planning, awesome. Yep. Um, it was such a game changer for me. Um, taking so, a Sunday mm -hmm. and um, laying out what I needed for the week, 
All right. And you put it in your Tupperware and you just reach for it when you're ready to go to work or go on an errand, whatever, and it's there. Awesome, awesome. Um, when it comes to the routine of exercise, breaking away from the running, yes. breaking away from the group X, what have you found effective for adjusting your routines, like going from a runner to a weightlifter, and you for going from group X to a, to a more of a weight trainer? Like what kind of adjustments did you make to get to like a routine like that? Um, I think I did have to just cut back on the cardio. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as I incorporated the weight training, um, slowly get into it. So obviously I didn't, you know, go from straight from the cardio classes to lifting really heavy. And so I think, especially, you know, working with you over the last few years, it's like progressing on the weight. So, you know, where before I could maybe deadlift very minimal weight. Now I can deadlift a lot more. So awesome. <laughs> Sorry. So changing, uh, that's okay. It's good. Uh, and the people around here really, the deadlift's cool because uh, <laughs> it works a lot of muscle groups and it challenges uh, our, our clients here. And uh, sometimes those challenges. Uh, a little know, inside joke. You know, inside, yeah, so not always the most fun thing to do. Uh, how often do you guys change your uh, weight training routines? Every eight weeks. Every eight weeks. Yeah. What have you found from switching from that cardio mode, then doing weights, to switching up your routine every eight weeks? Uh, body composition changes. Mm -hmm. um, I, as a runner, um, started getting knee problems, and so I had to change it up. And so I noticed when I started lifting weights that my physique changed and body fat dropped. Mm. And um, so by doing that, it, it really just changed um, how I looked and felt. What kind of things did you change with your routine? Like, what kind of exercises were you doing? Uh, what kind of what does your routine look like? So um, I would basically work um, my entire body. Mm -hmm. um, so I would pick, um, say I would work back one day, I'd work um, arms with back to get that double, um, to yes. more bang for my buck, yep. to get that workout in. That's a good point that you threw in there because a lot of people, they see a routine laid on a magazine and they're like, I want to tone arms, I want to tone back, I want to tone my chest, I want to they want it all, right? right? I want it all, is that a song? I want it now. Yes. Yeah. But anyway, it's a song. Yes. I forget who sings it. But you want it all. But the problem is, is we don't all have a lot of time. Right. So getting like, say one day you're working your chest and your triceps and your back and your biceps, getting those multiple muscle mus mus groups. So that's a good point. I like that. Perry, how about you? Like what things have you done to uh, change your plan up and keep adapting your plan to get results? Um, along the lines of what Kelly said, um, is changing things up as well, like, you know, doing a push and a pull workout, um, you know, just using different muscle groups. Um, it's just never doing the same thing for more than six to eight weeks because your body just gets accustomed to it and then it's not as effective anymore and then it gets easier. So you have to challenge your body. Fortunately, your body's smart, so. Yeah. Always got to be changing it up every four, every four to six weeks. Um, one, this is something that's not very uh, applicable to myself as a guy and all the guys out there. We've got it pretty easy. Yes, we don't have to. <laughs> we don't. I, I train a lot of women, so this is the feedback that I get. We talk about long term weight loss. Mm -hmm. We talk about forgetting the scale. And there's three things that really uh, <clears throat> affect women more than men is hormones, like uh, thyroid. Um, the time of the time of the month, the water. Um, what can you say about that when it affects your body fat and the scale? Like, how how can uh, you get those non-scale victories or, or get around dealing with hormones and getting defeated when it comes to scale, long-term weight loss, body fat, and whatnot? Well, I'm no expert in hormones, just to put that out there. But um, you know, one thing I will notice: there are certain times of the month where you know. You, women, we tend to retain more water. Um, and so you just kind of, for me, I just cognizant about that. So if I weigh myself and I know that's that lovely time of the month, I'm not going to beat myself up over it because in a couple of days I'll probably be down five pounds. So not really using the scale as a measurement of where I'm at. I mean, it's a good check-in every now and then, but you know, it's over the long haul um, progress, not just day to day. How do you deal with the, the different hormones, the thyroid, the water, body fat percentage changes over the course of a month that help you 
keep, stay consistent, stay upbeat. Right. Um, so um, I went into early menopause mm -hmm. um, at 32 from cervical cancer. Oh, wow. So um, my issues are a little bit different from month to month. Right. Um, I'm starting to notice more hot flashes, um, more water retention. So um, one thing I do is I drink a lot of water okay. just, just to flush the system out and just realize that um, knowing that I'm eating a balanced diet, I'm exercising, and I'm doing resistance training on top of that, on top of the drink and the water, I know that it may not be necessarily be gaining weight, body fat. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fluctuations in water and fluid retention. So long-term approach, understanding your body's changing, um, that you are achieving those goals, but to fall in love with that process of working out and, and understanding that that's gonna happen. Right, absolutely. Over the, over the course of that, that month. Um, Let's talk about like, uh, strategies for long-term fat loss. What are some things that you do? Uh, so a lot of times when people are on fat loss diets, I talk to them, they're like, well, do I have to give up my pizza? Do I have to give up my favorite glasses of wine? Do I have to give up my chocolate cake? Um, how do you guys deal with like, uh, still having those foods and getting great results? I know you enjoy those foods. Uh, we do. I heard you talking with your coach yesterday and you almost gave him a hug because he was giving you some foods that you yes. really wanted and you've been sticking to your plan. So yes. good for you to get those foods. So how do you guys do that? I think for me, um, on a normal normal time period, um, I try to eat fairly clean most of the week, um, especially since I travel a lot for work. I try to keep my own food that I pack with me just to kind of keep me in check. And then on the weekends, you know, let myself go a little bit. But when I say that, only like one or two cheat meals, because I know some people will like be really clean and then totally pig out on the weekend. And then you kind of offset the, all the work you did during the week. So, you know, I'll usually pick like a Friday or Saturday night. I have pizza, I have some wine, I have some ice cream, you know, enjoy it because um, I know some people feel really guilty about doing that. Just enjoy it and just use it to fuel your workout the next day. So I usually try to save legs for the day after so I can just use all that. Yes. Just go straight to the legs, build some muscle. Very good. So you pick a specific time that you go have your cheat meal and your favorite foods and then it's back on the plan. Yeah. No guilt. No guilt. Awesome. Gotta enjoy it. How about yourself, Kelly? The same exact thing. Um, I use, I like to call it an earned meal. All right. Um, just because I feel like, you know, people use that cheat meal like I'm doing something bad. Yes. So Treat I yourself. Yes. I How about refeed? Refeed. 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 Refeed's good. Refeed. 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 Refeed is good. Uh, the refeed kind of scares me because whenever I say that, I think I, like, I grew up on a farm, so I think of feeding animals on the farm. So like, <laughs> refeed always was a weird thought to me, but I, I like those increases in meat. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. that's fun. I just, I had to put that out there. Sorry. Wisconsin boy. Yeah. That's okay. All right. So, so talking about uh, um, treating yourself to those meals. Yes, you've worked hard, you're watching what you eat during the week, say, and you're getting your workouts in. You've earned a meal. And mm -hmm. now it's, it's not a, a day, it's not a earned day or a cheat day, it's a, it's a meal. All right. So I think that's important to key in on. And I think it is also important too, because if you are on a strict quote unquote diet and you're eating clean the entire time, like your body needs sometimes to, to have these meals to spike your metabolism. Otherwise it kind of shuts down a little bit. So I think it's actually helpful in the long run to have these. How do you, how do you guys deal with that when you say take a diet break? Like, so say you've been, you've been doing uh, training for 12 weeks for a specific result, dropping five to 6% body fat. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, you're done with that, but you take two, three weeks, a diet break. How have you noticed diet breaks been helping you? And how do you do a diet break? Um, I think it does kind of reset your metabolism, um, especially if you know you're really hardcore for 12 weeks, you know, your metabolism should be up and revving. Um, just, I think, be careful, because I think some people will just, you know, be very strict for 12 weeks and then just hit food really hard. And then I think you can gain a lot of that body fat back plus that, you know, plus more. So I think um, you need to slowly incorporate some foods and not go crazy. But I do think it's it's healthy to sometimes take a little break. Absolutely. Yeah. So how do you go about taking a diet break? Um, well, I, I compete uh, mm -hmm. for fitness competition, so... Um, both Perry and I do, and after you know that 14, 16 weeks of just being on on a really strict regimen of dropping body fat, you're hungry. 
<laughs> you're going to want to just right. eat everything in the refrigerator and, and you can't. Um, so you just, you have to, like Paris said, you got to be careful, um, choose wisely, but enjoy what you're doing and then get back into it, get, to, get back into the gym. So you found that taking a break from dieting has helped? Yes, it helps yes. with, yep, strength. Strength. Strength comes back. Um, How about mentally? Mentally, oh, it, yeah. Yeah, that's huge. Um, mentally is huge. Anything with energy? Yes. Well, especially, I know we're talking specifically more about competing, but we get down to very low carb levels. And so, yeah, getting carbs back, we can think normally again. Yes. Um, and then we get some energy. And then, Feel can better. I throw in my quote? I love my quote. Go, go ahead. So, yeah, when I get carbs, I'm like, who needs meth? You just, you know, carbs I, gives you such great energy. I didn't even Not know that. Not that I've ever tried meth, <laughs> but I'm just saying. That's, that's my quote. So. And then she starts itching herself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> So yeah, taking so the strategy for you guys found taking a break from your diet, getting that metabolism back up you found works. But then how to take the diet break was eating normally like you normally would, yes. but then if there's a piece of cheesecake there, you'll have your piece of cheesecake. Uh, you want a chicken sandwich, you'll have a chicken sandwich. Um, so because because if people are this is another mindset is if people are on these strict diets for a long piece of uh, period of time, I was thinking pizza. But if they're on these diets for a long period of time, because you're so focused for that period of time, you can develop uh, these eating disorders. So yeah. by taking diet breaks, right. it allows you to food. I, I don't think there's no such thing as a bad food. Food is just uh, uh, calories, and there's nutrient dense calories. That's why I learned in college and took my nutrition class is there's no such thing as a bad food, and it's just nutrient dense calories, nutrient dense or calorie dense calories. <laughs> So uh, you just you want to eat more nutrient dense. So uh, taking those diet breaks, um, what I hear you guys saying, it helps you prevent from you saying there's a bad food, mm -hmm. there's yes. a bad this, there's a bad this, yes. which can create an eating disorder. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, how have you found? Uh, uh, here's one for me that I see with clients, different sizes. Like uh, you have to take your as a female, like you'll you we've been programmed like this is the perfect body. But the perfect body is the one, like our shirts that we came out with, is love the body you live in, is because everyone's a different shape and size. Mm -hmm. So what have you experienced with your guys' different body sizes, different body shapes? Uh, for me, um, I was so focused in on the number, mm -hmm. on the scale, that um, all I wanted to do was get, get it lower, get it lower, get it lower. Well, I started lifting weights, and guess what? I started gaining weight. Well, it's, it's lean muscle that I was gaining. Right. Um, so for me, it was um, just which is good, healthy muscle. Yes. But, Being, yeah. yeah, but a long time ago, I was like, I was like, I want to be 105 or 110 pounds. Well, can't can't do that. I sit at normally um, training between 140 and 150, and I wear a size two. So it's it's body composition is different for everybody, right. and so the numbers on the scale don't necessarily matter. It's how you look and feel in your clothes. Right. So you can lose a lot of weight, but you also could lose that weight, be healthier, and replace all that with muscle. And now the muscle that you have, you're the same weight, right. which plays a mental game. Correct. So fall in love with the look that you're achieving for your own body. Yes. Not the number. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, yourself, Perry. I think one thing over the years that I've kind of learned is that you know, there's times where I like look at a model on a magazine. It's like I want to look like that, but I think genetics plays into part, you know. And so you can only do so much. And so you know, there's going to be problem areas, and I think everyone has it. Um, even the models on the magazine <laughs> they get airbrushed. Um, so I think just acknowledging that fact and not trying to be perfect, and you know, um, you know, sometimes you just have to work a little harder on certain areas of your body if you want to to fix it or get it better. But you can only do so much sometimes, and kind of just come to accept that. Awesome, those great points there. A lot of stuff I just learned there. Uh, last one is uh, when I first met you guys, you were scared of the big lifts because you wanted to be <laughs> big, you were gonna get big and bulky. Yeah. But incorporating the pull-ups, the deadlifts, the, the bench presses, what have you experienced firsthand doing the big lifts that are only for men and WWF wrestlers? Well, first, most importantly, we do feel pretty, you know, kick-ass at the gym. You know, yes. when we can lift heavier, some guys 
I have to say that. They do lift um, heavier than some guys, which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, but no, I think it's just great because I think, one, you get more bang for your buck. So like, as we've mentioned before, like when you're doing pull-ups, I mean, not only are you working your back, but you're working biceps. And so I think you are just burning more calories. Um, you build more muscle that way. So in the long run, you are burning more calories because the more lean muscle mass you have, the more calories you burn. Um, and so you're stronger, but you're not going to get bulky. Awesome. Unless you take steroids or something, which yeah, we just, yeah, it's to, uh, gain that kind of weight, you need to be consistent for five years of eating everything right, working out right day in and day out or using some kind of hormones. So you right. hit a good point there. Right. How about yourself? What experience have you gotten from the big lifts? The big, I love big lifts. Um, what? I do. I do. You do? I okay, do now. Great. I didn't before. Right. Um, and when I'm carbs- Look at that smile. The big lift I smile. I know. I love it. I love it. And I love going heavier. Um, for me, it's, it's composition changes, and I feel like I'm, I'm getting stronger. It's all about building that muscle and getting my metabolism revved up and burning that fat. Yeah, I would recommend, uh, you heard it here firsthand, like find your, and this is, you can get a trainer anywhere, but find a trainer that can coach you the proper way to do the big lifts mm -hmm. because you have to have good form, you've got to have good tempo to activate those muscles the right way, but you've heard it here, you will get the body composition changes. And if you follow any of these two on their Facebook or um, see their photos out there in shows, you will see how their bodies have transformed in the last three years. So, uh, ladies, just give them, a, give them a try for four to six weeks, and if it doesn't work, throw it in the trash and go back to all the strategies that aren't working in the first place. I mean, what do you have to lose? Just a little bit of time. Uh, but you're going to like the results that come with it. So thank you so much for these tactics uh, for female fat loss over 40. Uh, if you guys have any questions for Perry and Kelly, this is the second time they've come back and done an episode here. I'm sure they're, they're very gracious with their time. They're very helpful. They want to serve you guys. So uh, leave your comments and questions below. We'll bring them back and we'll help you guys out. So you guys have a great day. I would love to hear what you liked best about this video. So down below, you'll see a comment section. Just leave your comments, and I want to thank you so much for the comments you've been leaving me over the months, and I've been getting back to filling those out. Also down below in the description box, you'll see a link, and in that description box with that link, you want to click it, and it's going to take you to another page where you're going to get four free workouts. To get those four, four free workouts, you just have to enter your email address. So go down below, click the link, and we're going to get you those, those workouts right away by entering your email address. Also, down below, make sure you click the subscribe button so you get updated when we release all this great content. So thank you again for tuning in. Thank you so much for your comments. Go get your free workouts, and you guys make it a great day.